so I had the opportunity to play Valorant in the last few days and I've been enjoying it quite a lot. It's a good combination of precision from CSGO and the strategic abilities from Overwatch, for example. But what caught most of my attention was the pretty cool effects it has in general. But I couldn't stop noticing these walls from the agents Viper and Phoenix. They got me thinking how could I make them in Unity. So that's what I did. And I end up with this one. Of course this is my approach to the remake and I made a few changes of my own along the way. But I'm still gonna show you every step I took to achieve this. And by the way, in case you are interested in supporting me, this is all available on my Patreon page, you will get access to this project and you also get access to many other projects. So with that being said, let's see how to recreate this one. So this effect may not seem like it, but it's quite complex and composed of several parts. So let's have a quick breakdown. The first part is the projectile. Phoenix shoots a projectile that leaves three trails behind. The first one is right behind the beam. The second one connects the first trail with the ground. And the last trail leaves a mark on the ground, which is where the fire will come up. This wall of fire rising up is the second part, and it has a very distinct rising animation that goes from our position to the end of the trail and starts rising first near the character. This wall is mainly composed of three parts. The main red wall with an erosion effect happening at the top and in extremities as well. Then we got this kind of second wall with some yellow flames and finally we got some flames and particles. So that's the breakdown. Then I decided to start with the projectile and I created an empty game object with the particle system attached that leaves for 1.2 seconds and it fades in and fades out with the call of a lifetime. Then I use the trail render for the first trail with a very small wide that leaves for a second and a half and with this texture faded on top and on the bottom. Ending up with this. Cool. Then for the second trail that connects the first trail with the ground I used once again the trail render with a much bigger wide this time and it leaves the exact same time as the first trail but this time much more transparent and with alignment set to transform Z so it always faces up otherwise it keeps on flipping and trying to face the camera so yeah, transform Z on and rotated minus 90 degrees in the Y and this time with soft particles on so when it touches the ground, it fades a bit. Now for the third trail, it's a bit more tricky and I had to use a script that is going to be attached to the projectile. It also takes care of moving the projectile towards the previously given direction, but to leave a trail on the ground where the projectile passes, I had to shoot a ray from my fire point towards the ground. And then for every particle system, in my list of trails VFX, I created an emit parameter and set the particle position to the heat point of the ray and rotate the particle so it correctly faces up when it hits the ground. Finally, I enable the emission model and tell the particle system to emit particles with this position and that rotation. And this is the particle system that is going to leave a trail on the ground. It doesn't face the camera, it is set to local alignment and it also fades in and fades out with color of a lifetime. Then I assigned this particle system to the trails VFX list as well as the ground fire which emits a fiery texture that has a distortion and dissolve shader. You can learn more about this shader by the way in this fire wings tutorial which you can find in my channel. And this is how it looked at this point. But I had to turn off the emission model, otherwise it emits a particle in the beginning. Anyway, I got the trail on the ground as well as the two other trails. And the projector was pretty much done and looking great. Now to shoot the projector, 
I created a very simple script that will also manage the firewall. Basically, it will manage the wall VFX. So basically, I got variables for the projectile, the firepoint, the wall, the camera, and a few more things. The idea is that every time I click the left mouse button, I store the mouse position, create a ray that goes from the screen point to the mouse position, and start a coroutine called spawn projectile. In here, what really matters is that I spawn the projectile VFX, I instantiate it at the given fire point, and then I rotate the projectile towards the mouse. And the rotate to mouse basically needs a destination. And it's going to be the ray that goes from the camera to the mouse, but really far away, like 1000. Then I get the direction by subtracting the projectile position with the destination. And also get the quaternion, which is how Unity handles rotations. And finally, simply rotate the projectile with a quaternion.lerp with the amount of rotation previously calculated. And this is what I got. Pretty cool, right? Once I got the projectile working really well, I decided to move on to the firewall. So I went to Blender and created this model, which is basically a plane divided a couple of times with these UV maps. And it also has a subsurface modifier so I could get more faces and become smoother. And then I simply used two bones to animate the wall. I also have this second wall as well, which as you can see also has the bone influence painted. With the weights done, I proceeded to create an animation, just like this one, that first raises the wall near the player and then proceeds to grow up. And after importing the animated wall as an FBX to Blender, I came to the point where I needed to create a shader, so I could have the scroll and the erosion that we see in the Phoenix wall. So I made this shader in Shader Graph, and oh boy, did I have a lot of customization parameters. But still, here's a simplified version of that shader, so you can have a starting point in case you are following. So you can start with an unleaked graph, and make sure you turn on two-sided. You are going to need a color parameter that is going to be in HDR mode and white for the color, as well as a texture 2D for the main texture and another texture for a mask. Then you can add a vector 2 for the main texture speed and a vector 1 for the erosion amount, which is going to be a slider between 0 and 1. So you can pick the color then and multiply it with the main texture, just like this. And the main text is going to be a noise text. It can be anything similar to this. I'm going to use this one, which is the one that I made for my original shader. And this is going to be connected to the color. Right, looking good, we got the texture. And now all you gotta do is connect the R channel to the alpha clip threshold. And if you connect the erosion, yeah, you probably are going to need a one minus node to invert this. But now, you can control the erosion, as you can see, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, it almost erodes all the texture, right? But we don't want to have erosion near the bottom of our wall. So for that, you can use a new V node, and if you split this, you can use the green channel and multiply it with the R of our main texture. And as you can see, the bottom gets darker. Now you can replace the connection to the alpha clip threshold, and ta -da! you got the bottom part without erosion. And yeah, you can control the amount you want to erode by simply using a power node. And as you can see now, you have control over the erosion height. Last thing you need for this very simplified wall shader is the main text speed and the time node. Multiply them both together and connect this to a tiling and offset node. And if you connect this to the UV input of our main texture and increase the Y to negative values, you can get this simple but cool firewall shader. Oh, and if you want to use the mask, you can have even more control over where you will have erosion. Just need to add this like that and connect it to the alpha clip threshold. And that's it. 
Here you go, you have a very simplified wall shader. I don't even know why I used so many parameters in my original shader. Anyway, looking good, you can even control the color of course and play with that. So once I had the shader done, I added a reddish material from that shader to the main wall and another yellowish material, much more eroded for the smaller flames to the second wall. And it was looking pretty cool at this point, right? I also added the beam on the ground, which is a simple beam texture. And then all I was left to do was create an animator control, which has two layers, one for the animation created in Blender and the other to control some shader parameters with a wall up and a wall down animation to create this kind of effect. On the same script I used it to spawn the projectiles, the Valorant Phoenix script, that is attached to my beautiful FPS character, I created properties for the wall game object, a wall delay and a destroy delay. Now the tricky part is spawning the wall parallel to the ground and towards where we aim. So I use another ray that goes from the fire point directly to the ground. Then I spawn the wall on that hit point of the ray and rotate towards the mouse just like with the projectile, but this time rotate only in the Y axis. So that's why there's this lock Y boolean that will zero out the X and Z axis, so it only rotates in the Y. Then I get the animator component and before destroying the wall, I tell it to play the wall down animation by setting the is down boolean to true. And finally, I added a few particles and these fire flames as well. Which in case you want to learn more about how to create them, you can use this tutorial available on my channel or you can get my Udemy course to learn more about particle systems and VFX in general. The link's in the description. And after making a few adjustments, this is my end result. I think it's quite cool. Just wanna say that this required a lot of tweaking, really a lot, but in the end I think it was totally worth it and the effect came out pretty good. It was a great VFX exercise. And if you wanna study this up close, the whole project is available on my Patreon page. You support me and help me keep this type of videos coming too. And a big thank you goes to all my patrons. The channel survives thanks to you guys. And a special shout out to the super mega patrons, which are Adriano Bottega, Alejandro, ForteHeroGames.com, Goblin Plague, Imari SPC, Invention Games, Josh McCormick, Juan Mendiola, Jeremy Fouché, Ken Lee, Osgur Simsek, Solofor Razafimelio, Steven Melton, Sumsha, TK, and Artem Jim. You guys are amazing, and I hope you have enjoyed this video. So thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.